What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. We're back with another very interesting video topic. This is how much money you should have by age, which means what your total net worth should be by whatever specific age group you're in. So this is a slight continuation from the video last week, which was called how much money you should earn by every age. So these things are just super interesting to me. Like we know how much we're supposed to make, right? But I'm gonna break it down between every single level. So not only how much money are you making and how much money should you expect to make by each age, but how much money should you have? Like in the bank and in investments, all that stuff put together that then makes your net worth, what should it be? I actually don't know what the internet says. So we're about to jump into the internet and see what they have to say. I know what I think in my mind, but again, I might be a little wrong. Like in the last video, my expectations were way different than what the results were. So we're gonna see what the results are right now. All right, so once again, we're jumping straight into my phone. I've already went ahead and saved you the trouble of typing in average net worth by age, but I haven't read any articles yet. I just literally typed it in the Google search bar. But just so y'all know, this wouldn't be a Reggie video if my phone wasn't on 15% or lower. Anyway, so we're gonna go to this article right here by Nerd Wallet. Average net worth by age, how do you compare? And what I'm about to read isn't necessarily going by just single people. This is singles and couples. This is representative of households. So like in my household, there's just me, but like next door, you know what I'm saying? I got a few people living together. So that's what the numbers are coming from. So don't feel like this is just like one person and that's their net worth. Now we're gonna get started. This is gonna be a very interesting topic, guys. Very interesting. So just before we get started, I'm gonna to explain to you what net worth is as NerdWild explains it. So net worth is what you own minus what you owe. Using a net worth calculator, you can determine yours by deducting the value of all your liabilities, such as credit card debt and student loans, from the value of all your assets, including your home and the money in your retirement accounts. So that's exactly what we're gonna be going over today. And the thing I like about this article compared to the Mint article we read last time, it has the median and the average. So averages can obviously be skewed. Medians are a lot more accurate. But I do think it's interesting that it straight up says less than 35. Like that is a gigantic age range. So basically, if we're looking at adulthood, between the ages of 18 through 35, you can expect to have a median net worth of 13,900 and an average net worth of 79,000. 300. A lot to unpack. One, I would say it's definitely going to be much closer to the median as I was just alluding to, but it's for reasons that people aren't considering. Okay. So if you're less than 35, you could technically be 34 or 33. And there's a, there's plenty of folks in their mid twenties to their early thirties who have houses. So if you have a house, your net worth is technically going to be greater than that of someone who doesn't have a house because you own that house. There's a reason I put quotations around that, but we're not gonna to get to that in this video, but your net worth does go up because the house is an asset. Moving on, 35 to 44, a more reasonable age range. It go The median goes way up to 91,300, and majority of that is because of what I was just saying about the houses. Now it's more of a definite age range to have houses. But the average is $436,200, which is Pretty darn good, to be honest with you. And I'm just gonna take a quick break from the article real quick. The more you invest at a younger age, like into your retirement accounts, or if you start learning about investment accounts that you can do on your own, like your Roth IRA and things like that, that number is gonna be much more based on the more you invest while you're younger. So that is extremely important. Don't sleep on it when they tell you about contributing to your 401k or learning about your company match. All that stuff is extremely important because make no mistake, you do not have to own a house for your net worth to be large. You just need to have your money working for you at some capacity and the best way to do that is by investing your money in something. For some people that something is real estate such as a house, rental property, things of that nature. And for some people that something is investing in like stocks, retirement accounts, bonds, and things of that nature. So really start thinking about that. 45 to 54 median net worth range is $168,600. Average net worth is 833200 
And in case y'all don't remember from the last video about what your income should be by every age, 45 to 54 is where your salary tends to peak out at. And this is where you start to actually put even more money into your investment accounts. This is when, you know, bills are paid off. If you're a parent, you might be an empty nester, so there's less expenses in the household. Your income is up there. If you have any debt at all, it's getting paid off, hopefully. I'm just telling you, that's the story behind these numbers. So it's not like necessarily true for every single person in this age range, but this is just where these numbers are coming from. This is why the average is so freaking high. Like it's almost a million dollars. But because of all of this and you have excess money just laying there, they're like, I don't want this to just be sitting here. So I'm gonna put a bulk of this into my retirement account and have even more so I can sit back with my feet up when I'm 65, not worrying about nothing. And that's why when we look at the age ranges of 55 to 64, the median net worth is $212,500. And then the average net worth is $1,175,900, which, you know, you want to be in the millions at this point. Why? Because retirement is very quickly approaching and you need a few million to retire comfortably. Because let's say right now you make $120,000 a year and you want to be making the exact same amount per year just based off of your investments. That means you need to at least have $3 million dollars in your retirement account. And so there's this concept out there called the 4% rule. You would draw 4% from that account every year. And since it's only you taking 4%, your account is likely to grow more than that over the year. So it doesn't really affect the principal, but you take 4% from 3 million, that's $120,000. And so that's the thought process. And that idea by itself makes it so that once you draw from your account, it doesn't really affect the principal too much and you never run out of money. And even after you're passed away and gone, you still have money for your family and whoever else, charities and things of that nature. So the more money you have in your retirement, the better. That's why it's better to start investing while you're young because that money's gonna compound anyway. The biggest thing that grows money is time. Not necessarily what you put your money into, not what everyone thinks is hot right now, but not nah, like having your money in the market for a long amount of time is the one thing that guarantees that level of growth so long that you're making smart investment decisions. Investing videos are coming in 2023. So now we have 65 to 74. We're looking at 266,400 for your median net worth and then average net worth of $1,217,700. And I will say this, as we get into these older ages, you want to definitely aim for the average net worth. They may seem like they're far-fetched, but you really have to consider a few things here. When we're looking at less than 35, it's pretty normal to be within that median net worth range. But once we get things together, we need to not repeat mistakes such as getting into certain types of debt, like credit card debt, for example. That's completely avoidable. We don't need to get into that type of debt for the most part. It's not a debt that is needed. So when you're going Christmas shopping, when you're going shopping period and you're buying things that you don't need, if you don't have the money to pay for it, you definitely don't need to use your credit card to use it. When you're talking about your lifestyle expenses, you definitely don't need to overspend on like your apartment, on your car, on your house, because if you overspend there, that's going to be less money for you to save, less money for you to invest. That means you're hurting your future self just to appease your current self. And that right there is just unwise. And so, like I said, once all that stuff gets paid off, you start to take steps into the right direction. You start to get salary increases at work. That's when we need to start thinking about, okay, everything needs to be set up for me when I'm older. So you want to start aiming, like I'd say even from 34, from 35 to 44, that's when you want to start aiming for that 436,200 and above because your net worth must grow beyond that. I know that the average net worth is skewed, but that's really close to where you want to be because if you're not there, you can be hurting a little bit. And the last thing you want is to retire and have to live on pennies or even have to go back to work because you have to. Not because you want to, but because you have to. That is the worst thing that can happen. And then you're older. We don't know if you're going to be in the same type of health condition that you're in right now. You might be in your 20s or 30s right now. When you're 70, you're not going to be as able-bodied as someone who's 25 out there trying to get it. You know what I'm saying? This is not going to be like that. So you really need to think about the future and plan for the unknown ahead of time. It's a smart way to do things. It's what this whole channel is all about. But this video paints a picture as to why it should be like that. 75, median net worth is $254,800. 
and then the average net worth is 977,600. Now, I have a few theories as to why these numbers drop, but the main one is simply because you're drawing from your retirement and eventually it's going to naturally get lower anyway. Because some years the stock market is going to rise and some years the stock market is going to fall. And anytime it falls, so does your net worth. So that just makes sense. You're taking 4% a year. The stock market might drop by 16% one year. You know what I mean? And then it might go up 20% the next year. So it, those numbers are going to fluctuate a little bit. So yeah, that's pretty much the article. That's the piece that I wanted to go over. Now the article does go into how to calculate your net worth. So I'll link it down in the description, just like in the last video. So you can calculate your own net worth. But one thing I want to tell you is this. It's easy to get intimidated by some of the numbers that you may have just seen. It may be easy to tell yourself, well, I'm in debt right now. Look, you may have 30,000 of student loans. You may have 50,000 of student loans. But you have to think about this. What I was talking about just now is that if you prioritize saving and investing at a young age, that money is going to compound anyway. So why not do those on top of paying off debt? I understand if you can't do all three at once, but at least try to do two at once. If you can't, if you can't do the investing yet, just worry about paying off debt and saving money because you need to save money because you'll have some money to fall back on if something crazy happens. The last thing that you would want, and this is the big fear that I had because I was throwing crazy money at my debt at first. The craziest thing that could happen is you pay your debt down, but then you have nothing to show for it because you have no savings. And then COVID happens and you have no money left over for yourself. But your debt's paid off though. Like That's just like a smack to your own face. That's not good. So it's better to, I, I would rather personally have a savings and pay off my debt little by little than to say that my debt's fully paid off and I have absolutely no savings because then you can't provide for yourself. That is just sinful. It's easy to get intimidated by those numbers, but I really just want you to prioritize things and take life one day at a time, plan your months out and things like that. Things aren't always going to go according to plan, but you have to plan something. Once you really see the importance behind the numbers, you're, you're not just saying, well, no one needs a million. Like people say this all the time. Well, no one needs a million dollars. Well, yeah, technically you do. Inflation isn't going to stop and you're going to get older no matter what. And if you don't have the money right now, and if you don't have the money prepared for when you get older, when you do get older, you're going to constantly be in survival mode. And that is not what life is about. Life is about living to your fullest potential, being happy, spending time with the people you care about the most and doing things that you care about doing. Not being in survival mode, hating life, resenting people and hating the fact that you have to get up and go to work at, in the morning at 6 a.m. every single day. But you run the risk of having that perpetual type of lifestyle when you don't prepare yourself. So even though the numbers can be intimidating, even though no one probably taught you about these things or what net worth even means, now that you know, you can start taking the action to start getting there. And I have a book, I have resources, I have several videos on this channel and even if you don't watch this channel specifically there's so much information out there that's going to teach you about these things but that's why i like to inject a lot of my personality and a lot of my personal experience in with these things so you can understand the true impact behind these numbers because i could give you statistics all day and numbers all day but that's, you're not going to really relate to that and you're probably not even going to remember half of the stuff that i say if i did that so you want to relate your experiences now to the number that you want to reach and if you want more information, hit the link down in the description where you will get weekly emails from me showing you the way of the finances so you can continue to improve, so you can learn how to invest, so you can get out of debt, so you can save money, whatever it is that you want to do. I have a platform for all that type of stuff. You can follow me on Patreon as well. You can also see a look into my personal life there. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.